Good evening to all the attendees uh, in India for joining us today. To the 12th grade students, parents, and guidance counselors, thank you for so much for taking your kind time in joining us for this very important session on the topic California higher education system. And we have two uh, university officers from the California State University Northridge who will be presenting you today. We have Miss Shali, if you could kindly raise your hand and say hello. And we have Miss Yingying, if you could kindly raise your hand and say hello to all the attendees, that'll be great. And as you may have seen in the emails that have gone out to your schools, to the guidance counselors, the first 30 minutes will be the presentation topic, which is on your screen, California Higher Education System, followed by the next 30 minutes, which will be information on the institution of the two university representatives who are joining us, California State University, Northridge. And of course, please feel free, as we have mentioned in our email outreach program, please feel free to drop your questions. And uh, Ms. Shali and Ms. Yingi will be more than happy to answer them at the end of the program. We'll also be having uh, a quick, quick few polls towards the session uh, end. So please be on the lookout for that. And of course, I just want to make an important announcement to students who are interested in learning more about the California State University of Northridge. Kindly drop your email addresses in the chat box so that the two university representatives may get in touch with you. And of course, Ms. Shali and Ms. Yingying will also be dropping in the chat box their email addresses so that way past this program, you can enable direct interaction and relationship building with the U.S. colleges who are present today. With having said that, I'm going to hand over the floor and the microphone to the two university representatives. So thank you so much, Ms. Shali. Thank you so much, Ms. Yingying. We know it's very early in the morning. It's 5 a.m. in California. So we truly appreciate your kind time. And I'll let you take over the presentation. Thank you once again. Thank you so much for the introduction. Hi, everyone. Again, my name is Yingying, the International Outreach Counselor at um, California State University, Northridge. So today, it's my pleasure to share some information with you about California higher education system. As he mentioned earlier, please feel free to leave your questions at the chat room. We will be gladly to help you with that. So before we start, I would like to ask you, what do you know about California, right? What do you know about California? Maybe you've heard of California Disneyland, or maybe you're thinking the Hollywood movies, or you're thinking about the beautiful beach, or the Silicon Valley, where you can see the headquarter of the high-tech companies, such as Facebook, Tesla, Netflix, Apple, and so on, or the city of Los Angeles. You are correct. So California is a Western US state, and it is the third largest state in the US. So why there are so many options, and I need to make a decision, and California is my decision, right? So first of all, California welcome multicultural communities. We have the most diverse population in the US and we host the largest percent of international students in the US. And we have variety of schools and programs offered at large cities, smaller towns, rural areas with various cost of living. And the CSU systems, UC system, even offers thousands of academic programs. We will talk about the CSU and UC system later. The, international, uh, the international students can also have a lot of internship and job opportunities. It is the epic center of a variety of industries, such as entertainment, agriculture, import, export, finance, health, and the Silicon Valley, San Jose, San Francisco, LA, the very famous cities even recently have been named by Indeed as the first, second, the fifth the best UC, uh, US cities for job seekers. And what does the lifestyle look like? We have perfect weather, right? It means a lot to California people to have rainy days. And we have lots of sunshine all year round you will have the opportunities to explore dynamic cities and diverse landscapes from beautiful beaches to scenic forests, deserts, and the mountains. 
So if you have time, I will recommend you to take a, take a trip in summer or winter at California. You will be amazed by the beautiful uh, sceneries. As I mentioned earlier, California hosts the largest percent of international students in the US. You can take a quick look. The numbers we have are much, much more than the other states. And where are the students from, right? So besides students from India, we also have students from China, South Korea, Saudi Arabia, Canada, Vietnam, Taiwan, Japan, Brazil, Mexico. You will be able to learn the different cultures from different uh, background students. So today, again, we will talk a bit, uh, a little bit about the higher education system. What does the higher education system mean? Usually that means the education you will receive after high schools, right? After high schools. So we have three public segments, the University of California, UC, the California State University, CSU, and the California Community Colleges. We also have private nonprofit colleges, for-profit institutions, for-profit trade schools, where students can get vocational certificates, but not their degrees. Because eight out of every 10 college students in California attend a public institution, and then more than half are enrolled in the community system, we will spend more time today on the three public segments. So compared to the India high, higher education system, you can see a lot of similarities. Maybe you will have a little bit of um, question about California Community College. We will explain that. Shortly, uh, shortly speaking, it's like a stepping stone for people who like to re uh, receive bachelor degrees at universities. Also, in India, you may get a bachelor degree within three or four years. In the US, usually it will take four years. So here is the chart where you can see some quick facts about the three public systems. So first of all, California Community Colleges. It is the largest higher education system in the US. So the system enrolls over 2.1 million students at 115 colleges. And it awards certificates and two-year associate degrees. It prepares students for technical trades or transfer them to universities. The CSU systems. It is the largest public university system in the US, and it educates about 484,000 students at 23 campuses. And we focus on more about the under, uh, undergraduate and graduate instruction. It offers practical education and it prepares students for careers. UC systems. So it is a system that primary about, um, primarily offer academic research institutions. And it uh, usually offers doctor and professional degrees. It educates 250,000 undergraduate and graduate students at 10 campuses every year. So what are, the, uh, what are the information about CSU systems? First of all, the tuition fee for international students is about 16,500 per academic year, which is about eight months. The 23 CSU campuses include large commuter schools, mid-sized commuter schools, residential campuses, and newer small schools. So for example, the biggest campuses are CSU Long Beach, CSU Northridge, CSU, CSU, do you know that? Yes, we have CSU San Francisco and the CSU LA, CSU Fullerton. Those are bigger campuses. And the CSU is among the most diverse university system in the country. 
if you would like to apply, international students usually need to apply with at least a 3.0 high school GPA or 2.0 for transfer from community colleges. What does that mean? We will explain that to you later. Usually, um, it's, a, it's a US standard, so you can Google that. But I believe Shali, my colleague, will give you more information about the admission, um, admission information. And some majors may be impacted at some campuses. The impact, the impact means they are very popular. So for most schools, SAT and ACT, they are optional. And the students can usually start school in fall. Some schools offer spring semesters as well. The UC systems. Compared to the tuition fee um, of CSU systems, the tuition fee is a little bit higher. The average tuition cost for out-of-state and international students is about 43800 So the nine campuses at UC systems, they offer undergraduate study and they rank among the top 150 universities in the world based on the quality of research and faculty. More top 10 departments than any other university in the US, public or private. And most campuses, they have large enrollments. International students need, uh, usually need about 3.4 GPA or 2.8 for transfer from community, uh, community colleges to apply, right? So compared to the uh, CSU schools, you need to apply with higher, higher GPA. So UC Board of Regents recently voted to stop uh, requiring students to submit SAT and ACT. You can pay attention to the news or Google that for more information. Okay. So if you have some concerns like about CSU and UCs, you can uh, take a look at the California Community Colleges systems. There are 115 colleges under the system. The, um, usually according to the experiences, international students chose um, the uh, community colleges because of they want to save some money. You can save a lot because um, Cal community, community colleges have the lowest fees in the nation. Apply universities with some transfer, uh, transferable college units will help you save money. And you can take more time to think about your future. Some students may not know exactly what they want to, to study, right? So community colleges in California will give you the study abroad experience and help you develop an education plan to assist you in reaching your goals on time. So now you have heard about the options, right? The UC schools, CSU schools, and the community colleges. So what should you do next, right? You can talk to your counselors or you need to, um, the first questions you need to think about are which major do you want to study in the future? How will you fund your studies? What does the employment market look like in India or in the US? Are you ready to solve the potential issues? Do some researches. For example, where is the school location, the tuition fees, admission requirements, and application deadline? And then you can, gather the, uh, you can gather the information and talk with your parents. Will your family support you? Can you arrange a family trip with, um, in summer or winter? That will help you um, make the final decisions. Seeing is believing. So let's take a quick look at the two questions. Are you ready? So the first question is, California's higher education system has three public segments, the UC system, the California community colleges, and the, yes, CSU system, California State University system. So question two, California community colleges have what in the nation? I believe you can find so many answers here, right? But here, the answer is the lowest fees. 
So hopefully my part about California higher education can help you know more about the system. So thank you so much for listening. Now I will give, um, I will let Shali take the next 30 minutes. So good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Shali. I'm another uh, international outreach counselor from California State University. So uh, thank you, Ian, to give us very uh, wonderful presentations about the California higher education system. So in the following uh, 30 minutes, I'm going to introduce this one to every one of you and then tell you why you should think about uh, attending CSUN later as your future. Uh, so uh, before I start, I just uh, type like announcing the chat box. So if you need uh, our brochures or you want to receive the more information about CSUN, uh, you can leave your message um, in the chat box. Uh, if you don't want to share your like chat box like um, uh, in the public to everyone, so you can choose the in or me to send us uh, privately. So after the presentation, uh, we will send our brochures uh, to you to your emails. So let's start uh, my presentation. Thank you. So as I mentioned, uh, the CSUN, California State University in Northridge, we also call as CSUN, is a four years public schools within the California State University system. But we are the largest because we have the largest uh, undergraduate enrollment. At the same time, we have the biggest uh, campus among all other 23 CSU campuses. So CSUN, we located in the Southern California, uh, which is like Northwest of downtown LA. So in the map, you can see uh, Northridge, CSUN is over here, and we are very close to the Hollywood and the Buffalo Hills, which is about like 40 minutes driving distance. So the fun places nearby include uh, Disneyland, Universal Studios, Hollywood, so CSUN is actually located in our suburban areas where you can live in a nature, safety, and um, uh, like the, uh, the quiet uh, environment, but also you can enjoy the vibrant and the convenience of Los Angeles. So CSUN, we have eight, college, eight colleges offered more than 60 undergraduate majors. 70 master degree programs plus three doctor degree programs. So we have provide a very prehensive range of areas of study, including engineering, business, social science, health science, arts, and etc. So currently we have almost like 40,000 uh, students enrolled, but we still provide a very small uh, class size. So our student and faculty ratios is about like 24 versus one. So that means you are still have opportunity to uh, connect with the faculty and then let the faculty remind you and help you with your academic study. So here is our CSUN's international uh, student profile. So amongst all the CSU, uh, like the CSUN students, we have about like 70 international, 1700 international students right now. As of like tw spring 2020, you can see here is our top 10 countries uh, where our international students come from. And uh, India uh, is our like a uh, second largest uh, international student populations on our campus. And in the right side, uh, you can see it's our outstanding graduate students. She just graduated uh, May uh, 2020 with uh, her uh, master degree in engineering management. So as her time at CSUN, she is our she was our like a, a student assistant in International Student Center, and she also uh, uh, was the president of uh, International Student Association, and she was also very active in other organizations and uh, CSUN activities. So she really enjoys her time at CSUN. So here right now, is I'm going to briefly uh, talk about uh, the top majors at CSUN. So overall, uh, we have we ranked as a top 25 rising star institution for research in North America, and also top 20 public school in the Western United States by the U.S. News. The most popular and the top majors uh, among our international students are within our College of Engineering and Computer Science and the College of Business and Economics. 
Our engineering and computer science college is ranked top 135 in the United States and top 35 in the Western region. And also our College of Business and Economics ranked as the best business school in 2019 by Princeton Review. And we think that the accounting major is ranked as a top three in California and a top 68 in, account, uh, in the USA. And another major financial planning is a top six in the United States too. Because we are very close to the Hollywood, so there's another major definitely is our film production, which is also the top 25 in the nations. And we have all the industry standardized equipment for our students' movie projects. And because we have very strong connections with Hollywood industry, so it's very common to see uh, some like film crew uh, on campus to shoot um, music video, TV shows, commercials. And recently, uh, Justin Bieber has one of his music video actually shoot on our campus. And the female male character is even our CSUN current students. And the other top majors uh, include music, top 25 in the nations and animation is top 17 in the uh, like uh, among all the public school in the United States. So I know like uh, for as for the Indian students, uh, the majority of them will choose either College of Engineering and Computer Science or the business. So in the following two slides, I will focus on these two colleges. So as you can see, uh, our College of Engineering and Computer Science, we have like five departments, civil engineering and construction management, computer science, electrical computer engineering, manufacturing system engineering and management, and a a mechanical engineering. So within these five departments, uh, they have like oh, different majors with uh, several concentrations. Take computer science as an example. So computer science is a major, but it also have concentrations in data science uh, and like a software development or like a cybersecurity. So they probably have like four or five um, concentrations. It depends on what areas you are interested in. Then you can choose um, like a focus on that uh, like a, as areas of study. So if you say you are interested in more than like more than one uh, areas of a focus, and that's fine. You just talk to the academic advisor, and then you can have like two concentrations as well. So uh, our College of Engineering is um, emphasized providing the hands-on experience to our students. So that's why we have like a seven uh, different labs and 14 engineering like a clubs providing research opportunity for our students. And our students' projects actually won top prize in different comp uh, competitions, uh, such as California-wide manufacturing challenging contacts or nationwide software development competition um, competitions. And additionally, uh, we our College of Engineering we they co collaborate with uh, like a high big uh, high tech companies for the research. For example, our uh, um, professors participate in NASA autonomy research, gain three million fundings uh, for their research, and also the software designing giant Autodesk also award one million to support our engineering schools, the integrate design and the manufacturing projects. And we also have a tech facts. Uh, it's over here, you can see. So this is a big event in the College of en uh, Engineering. So it's a showcase to um, it's showcase student projects and ideas uh, to the professors and the professionals in the engineering industry. So um, you can, it's a very good opportunity for you to connect with the potential uh, employers. Uh, after graduation, uh, our alumni I work in uh, various like uh, big tech companies. Um, for example, um, we have uh, students work as a machine learning engineering in Apple, 
and we also have students work in the aerospace. And uh, right now, the principal uh, engineering uh, in the JPL actually is our system alumni. So all of these are good connections. So after you graduate, if you want to uh, find a job uh, in the United States, uh, alumni network is really important. It's a really good resource for you to find jobs or find an intern. And now this is our uh, College of Business and Economics. So in the, um, our business, you can see uh, they have, uh, they have actually um, five like a, uh, like a departments and also including uh, like a different majors, including the accounting, finance, management, uh, business administration, marketing, and et cetera. So they also have a lot of uh, clubs and organizations for our students to uh, get some real experience in the uh, industry. So here you can see we have accounting association, Americans marketing association. So they do work project together to provide hands-on experience to our students. Additional to that, we also have like a other service and a support to uh, help our students succeed in the College of, Eng uh, College of uh, Business. For example, uh, here we have a Wells Fargo Center for Small Business and Entrepreneurship, uh, and we have like CISA Innovation incubator Incubators. So these two programs actually is uh, helping students who want to start up their own business. Uh, by providing the startup funds or the counseling service. So take um, um, some like examples. So recently we have like a one uh, CSUN students with the system help of CSUN uh, innovation incubators. So uh, he received uh, about like a 30,000 um, uh, funds from the Silicon Valley to support his designing and the maintenance of a sport app. And uh, um, we also have um, an, another like a CSUN student team. They want uh, about like, uh, like also like start farms um, to support their like startup company from the Amazon like Alexa. So it's a really good opportunity um, for you um, to think about your ideas and it will help you to turn your ideas into the products or the surveys. And then the lastly, uh, we the college of itself has Ernest Young uh, Career Center. So where they will organize um, some like connection with the alumni to find for, or helps you to find interns. So overall, we have about like 800 uh, students uh, annually to work or intern in the companies and firms in the Californias and in the nation. So here's other outstanding opportunities. Uh, you can see uh, as the, if you are interested in biology, we have CSUN and a UCLA stem cell uh, program. So this scientist training program will send our students to the UCLA biology lab for a year to, um, to, to do the research with UCLA faculty and students. And also we offer the DC internship programs over here. So over 100 political science students have participated in this program. So during the summertime, if you are um, participate in this program, we'll send you to the White House in Washington DC um, for the intern for during the summer. And here's other um, opportunities listed here uh, because time limits, I won't go over uh, each of these. So here, just uh, uh, some examples where our alumni work after graduation. So besides the big companies I mentioned uh, before, our students also, also work as a producer in the Disney studio, um, 21st Century Fox, and we have students work in the healthcare, like Quest Diagnostics, uh, the business sectors like Ernest Young, um, like accountancy firm, Samsung. So we, our students work in the various industries, including the healthcare, uh, education, uh, governments, big tech. Uh, so it just have a strong alumni network. 
So here is some like um, uh, treatment that our international students accomplish or while they are study at CISA. So the first one is Sari. Uh, he is a business management uh, student. Uh, so he won the World Health Assembly Award in a national conference in Washington, D.C. So the second is a team, student team, Norman's uh, finance major, Daniel uh, electronics engineering major, so uh, their teams won the Judges' Choice Award in a um, uh, conference. And Daniel right now is also the student staff in the IT department and the uh, Smart Lab Tutoring Center right now. So the third is uh, she is our film production major student. She is also our stu student's assistant in the uh, CTVA is uh, like a television and a cinema department. So right now she's also the co-media coordinator in ICC uh, Rosemary. And the last one, she was uh, one of our uh, CISA Economics Award recipients is uh, like a department scholarship. And uh, she's alumni, she, right now she's working as a software engineering at Odibi. So this is what our student achieved. So imagine if you come to CSUN, there's all these opportunities for you and you can also shine as them. In addition to academic uh, support, uh, here's also some other resources we uh, provide to help students succeed uh, at CSUN. So we have an international student center where uh, they organize all kinds of different um, like activities to enrich international students' life and help them adapt into the U.S. and the campus life. We also have an international advising hub. This is really important for uh, the freshmen, for high school students who just uh, like transit into the university because they will work you together with your educational plan and uh, make sure that you graduate within the four years and achieve your educational goal. And uh, if you need uh, extra help for your academic study, we have like a learning resource center where you can um, find um, like um, the, the free Twitter or uh, the uh, English writing proofread service. And that's a free to our students. And here's is some like um, pictures about our student recreation center. So you can see it's a very large and a modern gym, um, full ways, all kinds of like facilities for our students to exercise and keep fitness. And most importantly, it's free to our students. And lastly is our uh, like campus career center. I mentioned the College of uh, Business, they have their own career center and the university have like a university wide career center. So uh, each year they will organize at least two uh, like career fair where to uh, help students to connect with the employers. At the same time, they will help students with resumes and interview. They're just here to help students prepare um, job, um, finding jobs in the United States. So here's another facilities is called the OSIS uh, Wellness Center. So that's I'm always bragged about it because very few universities have that. It's a place you can see is very comfortable, cozy, and relax. So it's where the place where you can revive and refresh your energy. They provide like a massage um, and a meditation, the uh, like a nutrition counseling service, except um, the massage other services are all free to our students. And they even have nap pods. So if you see the third pictures here, this is our nap pods. So let's say if you feel very tired between the classes and you really would want to take a nap, so go to our OC center. You can reserve this nap pod for 30 minutes and then take a nap. So uh, the tuition. So because we are the public school, so we actually provide very uh, affordable tuition to our international students. Even comparing to other states, our tuition actually is relatively cheap. So here you can see for tuition only per, uh, per year, two semester, actually our tuition is about like a 16 um, thousands uh, a year, two semester. And as an international student, you also need to 
uh, by the health insurance is over here. So it's about like around like 2000 um, a year. So other fee that um, you uh, need uh, is like you have to pay uh, is our room and the meals is about like uh, 30,000 is on campus housing. But this is not mandatory. So if you have a relatives uh, in the California, you want to live with them, it's okay. You don't need to live uh, on campus and pay this fee. You can just commute to school. Uh, so we estimate for a year, uh, the total like cost of to study at CSUN actually is about like 30, Five thousand uh, to semester, including everything: housing, tuition, insurance, and other expenses like transportation and books and supplies. And again, only two fees you have to pay to school. That is a mandatory, which is a tuition and the uh, health insurance. Other fees is um, is like a personal choice. You know, um, so let's say if you can find the books online or you have other uh, classmates, they can um, like borrow the books to you, then you don't need to pay any books and supply. So it's very like affordable at CSUN. And also at the same time, we provide a, a scholarship to our students. So our scholarship range is from like a, a, a 500s to 12,000 uh, a year. So the average is being uh, like 11,000. So here's some like, examples of a uh, scholarship that international students can apply. So here the international mandatory scholarship uh, that is only for the international students and other scholarship, let's say the leadership award or department scholarship, university scholarship, um, that's um, open for all the students, including the domestic and international students. But uh, here's the one thing I have to um, emphasize is like our scholarship is only for current CSUN student. What that means, that means like um, as a like an incoming student, as the time you apply to CSUN, we couldn't afford any scholarship to you, unfortunately. But once you are students at CSUN for at least one semester, and that you are eligible to apply uh, or kind of like a scholarship and you can apply multiple scholarship at the same time. And uh, here is our admission requirement. So uh, actually Ian has briefly mentioned it about, uh, yes, so as this sounds, our like admission like requirements very easy. We just look at two things on our students. The first one is a high school GPA. So we request you to have like a 3.0 high school GPA. So these three uh, high school GPA will calculate from your 10th grade to like uh, 12 or 12th grade and to, um, to, to um, calculate an average like um, your um, average like uh, grades in all the courses you attend in your high school. Uh, so, um, so you don't need to worry about your GPA because once you submit your official transcripts, our admission team, they will calculate, uh, calculate it for you. And then the second requirement is uh, our English proficiency exam. So as an um, international student, you need to take either one of these um, English proficiency exam. So the most popular one is a TOEFL or else. So the, for TOEFL, the minimum we request you to have like 61. And for the else, um, you need to have like minimum uh, 6.0 um, like scores. And because of COVID-19, so right now, so we accepting a more alternative like um, test. So I list this here. Uh, so right now for the, a lot of the students um, take the Duolingo because it's, you can take it at home. You don't need to go to the testing center to text it. So we also accept Duolingo right now. And ACT or ACT uh, SCSM is optional. So you don't need to uh, submit uh, your ACT or ACT score. It won't affect your admission. So we only look at you um, based on your minimum GPA and your English proficiency exam uh, score. So basically I can uh, share with you if you meet uh, our minimum requirements and I think you probably get a very high chance to get into the system. 
And here's how to apply uh, to CSUN. I know you are, um, the most of you are like a 12th grade student. So you are uh, like a seeking like aim to our fourth semester 2020. Uh, so our application actually starts in October this year, 2020. And then the deadline is the May uh, 31st. But I won't um, like recommend to wait until last minute to submit an application. Why? Because we won't admit you until we received a, a complete application. So um, you still need to have time to, um, or we still need to have time to issue the I-20 and then you need to receive the I-20 to apply the visa. So it takes time. So I would recommend you to uh, submit application as soon as possible. Here's the three steps for you to complete the application, uh, very simple. And so you need to apply with the Cal State Apply. This is the application system for all the CSU, not just for CSUN. So if you are interested in, in the uh, CSU Long Beach or CSU Fullerton, uh, San Jose, uh, you can also use this uh, application. It's a one application for 23 campuses. And then application fee is uh, $70. But here are the $70 that you have to pay to each school. So if you, that means if you apply to two schools, that means you have to, um, to pay like $140 in total. And then once you submit the application, the next step, oops, sorry. The next step for you is to submit your official transcripts. Uh, so you are, uh, you can request official transcripts um, from your high school and then mail it to us. And then uh, you also need to submit your English proficiency exam report and the mail is to our international mission. And then lastly, uh, you we request you to submit like a financial affidavit and a bank statement with like thirty five thousand dollars in your bank. And this uh, is for uh, the I-20 purpose because the U.S. Uh, like Immigration Center, they recall this showcase you have uh, enough um, funding to support you study as um, United States uh, for a year. So we have to have this to issue the I-20. So for this, you don't need to um, mail the official copy. Uh, you can just scan it, uh, the original copy, and email to our uh, international mission. So three steps, one on the application, and then one official transcripts and um, like English proficient exam report. And then last one is finish of David, you can email it. So very easy and a simple application. Um, there's no any essays or recommendation letters needed. So you, we only look at your GPA and English proficient exam. So uh, here's what, what I want to share with you. Uh, so if you have any um, more like concerns, uh, you can uh, type your questions in the Q&A or chat box. We'll answer after presentation. So if you want to email us, so feel free to do that. So here is our email address. So my name, sha, S-H-A dot L-I at CSUN dot A-D-U is my email address. And for Ying's email address is a list here. Uh, her name, Y-I-N-G in dot uh, Y-I-N-G at CSUN dot edu. So thank you again for attending uh, those, uh, attending the workshop. So now we'll look, take a look at the questions. So we do, um, I try to answer some questions. Um, so Sha, you can take a look and see, do you have anything you want to add? Um, so for example, I just want to talk a little bit about our uh, clubs and activities. Um, Sha and I, we, um, we had um, international student experience a, a little bit because when we came here, we came here as international students, right? So um, personally, I got my master from CISA in 2014, and um, it's a master in higher education. So I chose California because I feel it's easier for me to adapt the new culture. And when I was a student, I, I didn't know 
I didn't know too much about the education system in the U.S. So I talked to my professor, and my one of the professors um, introduced me to um, an, uh, a local elementary school. So I had a um, you know voluntary uh, experience there every Friday, and I found a student assistant job um, on campus too. I work. Um, um, up to 20 hours a week at the International Student Center. So, um, so those can be added to my resume. And if we do have a lot of interna um, students from India. So if you Google that, we even have the um, we even have the Indian uh, Student Association at CSU system, California State University system. So just Google that Indian Student um, Association at CSU campuses. You will be able to find more information directly from, uh, from uh, um, our Indian students. And we have more than 300 student clubs, you know, so you can um, join any of them or two of them. For example, the engineering majors, um, as you may know, in the engineering industry, there are less female students. So we even have um, the festivals and the organized student organizations offered by um, offered to in, uh, the female students. So take a look at the clubs and activities. We we'll, we always have like um, the Friday International Coffee Hour. Uh, there are many many activities, um, and. And uh, let's see, how can students apply for the research and teaching assistantships on campus? Um, yes, as I mentioned, um, the best way for you gender, for example, at CSUN, we have career center, contact your professors, because usually they have more, um, they have more information. So Sha, do you want to, um, do you want to add anything? Uh, yeah, so um, go back to the uh, clubs and activities. So uh, let me share the screen with you. So you can take a look at our like clubs and organization. They have their own website. Uh, so uh, I don't know if you can see right now. So uh, here is our like system matador like uh, organization of clubs. Just um, in as mentioned, we have like above, above like three hundred clubs and organizations in all different camps like uh, interest, hobby, and uh, focus of areas. Uh, so here you can search our clubs and organizations. If you find if you couldn't find anyone that interesting, that's fine. Actually, it's very easy for you to uh, start up a new like clubs and organization. That that you feel you, you want to have, you feel interested in. And here you can see the events. So see right now, even we are in the virtual, students are not on campus. They, we still have a lot of like um, events uh, going on going on so here is all the events we have and then here just some like um, organizations just a list of organizations and there's a lot so i won't go over um, uh, every one of the, uh, every one of these so um and then um for the like the second question about the like the research assistant yeah so if you are uh, the assistant student so you you will always email uh, get an email from your professors from your department so if they will have any opening for the research assistant uh, they will all they, normally they will email to all the students and then you will see it at the same time uh, good, um, just a tip for you it's just like a share like a keep very good um like a connection with the faculty because they are the one uh, to hire the assistants. So uh, if you have like good uh, connection with them, um, once they will have opening, the first student they will think probably is about you and then they will just directly ask you, hey, are you interested in um, a researcher or like student assistant have an opening? So yeah, that's what I want to add. And then we have new um, questions coming. So it's about admission. Uh, so from an admission point of view, do you only look at 10th and 12th or 9th through 12th? Okay. So uh, once you submit your uh, transcripts, actually we need you to submit the uh, transcript from 9th grade to like 12th grade. But um, for admission team, they calculate the GPA, they will only focus on 10 to 12. Yeah, so for 9 to 12, we still record it, but they will only look at the, they're focused on the 10 to 12. So I hope this answers your question. Um, 
And another thing I would want to say is because uh, I know uh, normally the students, um, they won't get their 12th grade like a uh, transcript until the summer uh, after they graduate. So at the times you uh, submit your transcripts, actually you probably only have like a nice ninth, ninth grade to 11th grade or like a ninth grade to 12, uh, the first semester of 12th grade. So it's enough for you to submit 11th grade or uh, first semester of 12th, 12th grade um, uh, like uh, uh, the report uh, because we will give you uh, the pro lim uh, the we call the um, like the provisional uh, admission and that means we will admit you based you uh, based on your ninth grade to eleven or first grades or uh, first semester of a uh, twelfth grade like a um, score and then uh, after you admit it uh, we will after the summer we will request you to submit the final transcripts so then we will look at your 12th grade the whole year, so the GPA to see if you still meet our uh, GPA requirements. So uh, the next question um, is, uh, as a parent, I would like to learn more about your for, uh, form I-20 requirements. What is the amount to be shown or when do we have to submit financial uh, documents? Okay. Uh, so yeah, so for as I mentioned uh, in your bank statement, we you need to show have like thirty five thousand dollars in your bank. Um, that is actually is the estimated cost of studying as at CSUN for a year. So thirty five thousand dollars is the amount that you have to show in your bank statement, and then. Uh, when to submit the financial documents. Okay, so I know for certain uh, other university, um, you they only request you to submit financial uh, documents after you admit it. But at CSUN, actually, we have to see your financial affidavit, uh, affidavit um, before we can admit you. So once you submit the application, uh, I would suggest to you to uh, submit the financial of, of affidavit as soon as possible. And then the deadline to submit it is our application deadline, which is May 31st. And then uh, the next question, uh, let's see. Okay, so we have a one student's email here. Uh, so Ian, could you please copy that? Uh, yes, I will. Um, yes, of course. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And for uh, CBSE students, uh, do we still need to submit the IELTS even if we have completed our uh, education in English? Yeah. So unfortunately, uh, you still need to take either IELTS or TOEFL um, because um, the only way to waive um, the English proficiency uh, requirement is that you have to be in the English speaking like a uh, like country, even I know the English is uh, like a part of like official language in India, but it's not kind of like a native language. So as here, you still need to um, submit a to uh, TOEFL or else even you are, uh, your all courses is taught by the English. So unfortunately. Okay, so one more question. Am I required to take math in 12th grade for my economics major? Okay, so I know for the UC, uh, you they require for uh, the HUG, so they require you to take math um, for four years. Um, but as CSUN, or the HUG requirement is optional, so it's not mandatory. We don't mandatory to take any courses in your high school. So if you couldn't um, take the math um, during the, your uh, 12th grade, that'd be fine. It won't affect your admission to economics major. So yeah, you don't, if you couldn't to take the math, yeah, it's okay. Uh, can you share about campus safety for your university and also campus uh, precautions measure taking the time of uh, COVID-19? Um, yeah, so campus safety, uh, we have kind of like a, uh, like the police stations on the campus. So they are always uh, like um, to keep our safety on campus. And also uh, if you are enduring the um, nighttime, if let's say if you are studying in the library very late and then you 
don't want to like walk back to your uh, dorm uh, by, by yourself, you always can ask uh, our uh, like security guy to uh, or like escort you back to the uh, the camp uh, to your dorm. And for the uh, precautions measures in the COVID nineteen, yeah. So right now, uh, actually, all the for for the, all the CSU. Of for 2020, all classes will be the virtual. So there, there won't uh, like in-person classes. There are a few in-person classes. That's for the courses such as like a, a lab, the biology. They need a lab, so they have like an in-person class. But for all other classes, they all happens in uh, online virtually. So actually, uh, we have like recently have Indian students. They just ask us if they can still uh, stay a, in their home country uh, to take online classes, and the answer is yes. So that's the one way we um, prevent students from the COVID nineteen, and also at the same time, uh, so it's very strict right now. Even the faculty and the staff, we are remotely working at home. If we need to go back to campus, actually there's a lot of like a procedural process we need to complete before we go back to the campus. And uh, they have like a deep clean uh, on campus, like a routinely. And also um, for the housing, we still have students uh, like, a, like living on campus. But right now uh, our uh, housing, we have just like, um, just like, a, change the way we uh, share the rooms with the students. So for example, in the past, we have probably have like two students share one in one big bedroom, but now we'll have like each of one students uh, living in one room. So keep the social distancing. Yeah, so Ian, do you have anything to add to that? Um, I just want to say safety, it, your safety is definitely our priority. Um, and Northridge is a very friendly community. Um, when I when I was a student, you know, like I, I, so when I was a student, I explored the neighborhood area at the wrong direction. So on the, uh, for my first week, I was like, um, why I couldn't find any supermarkets because I was at the you know the the living community area but when when the next day i uh, i turn another direction i saw so many supermarkets restaurants shopping malls um so so it's a very convenient area and you won't feel um you won't feel feel like that that noisy um but during the weekend when you want to go to theme parks there are six flags you know like uh disneyland universe uh, universal studios within uh 40 minutes by car there are so many things you can do. Let's see. So what would, would admissions be affected next year due to less seats being available as many students this year are different to 2021? Um, so we welcome international students. We really welcome you. Um, if we need, um, if we do have that many students, we may have more classes, right? So I don't think that will be one issue. And as Sha mentioned, we will also have some classes online. So, um, so just stay in tuned. Um, feel free to email Sha and, and I. Um, we will open our spring 2021 applications in August. So um, that's why I encourage you to make Make sure um, the application date you don't want to miss that um, so I don't think that will be one issue and the question um, at your university what would be the impact in terms of duration of my degree and tuition fees if I double major or if I choose one major and one minor so usually they will pay the tuitions by units so um, international students are required to maintain the F1 visa by um, by being the full-time students, which means you need to take at least 12 units every semester. If you would like to graduate sooner, you can uh, take some classes in summer and the winter. Um, so during that time, you will be able to pay local students fees and save some money. So um, if you will double major, yes, you will take more units. If you want to study another minor, you will take more units. You will need to pay more. Does CSU Northridge Xiao, do you want to say anything? 
Uh, yeah, so I just uh, want to add one thing about double major and major and minor. Uh, so we do offer double major, but it should be very, very close to major. So let's say if you are in the engineering and by the same time you want to study arts, and then that's um, that's one uh, like a workable at CISA because we have a room. So if you want a double major, you want to make sure and that you can complete the two majors within 140 uh, units. So to get one bachelor degree, uh, the total units you need to com complete is a 120. And then for the 140, that means within the another 20 units, you need to complete another major. So that's uh, the, the the one issue. So if you let's say if you want to enter um, double major in electronic uh, engineering and computer science, that may feasible because that within the same um, college and they share a lot of like uh, courses. Uh, so you may like finish both two majors within uh, two uh, within 140. So that's that means um, uh, then you can calculate. Actually, you can estimate the tuition by that because you take another 20 minutes. So our tuition per unit is a 390. Uh, six, like almost like 400 per unit. So you just plus that to estimate how much extra money you need to pay if you want to double major. And for the minor, yes, definitely we encourage our students to do the uh, major and minor. So if you can, you can use the CSUN catalog to see what's the minor we offer because not all the major we offer the minor. So you Google CSUN catalog and then choose um, the minors. You will see a list of the minors we have. Yeah. Okay, so next I question. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry yeah. to interrupt. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go. Okay. So yeah, next question is that CSU Northridge offers a combination of a bachelor and master degree program and how would an admission work for such program? So unfortunately, we don't have such combination program. Uh, so um, you have to like apply again. So after you get your bachelor degree at season, and if you are interested in a master degree, you need to submit the application again uh, for the master degree program. And it's a different application. Um, but there's a one like advantage for you to um, take a master degree at CSUN is that if you have the plan for that, talk to your academic advisor uh, and then after, during your like a senior or like a senior year, you probably can start take some like a master degree levels courses during your senior year if your advisor approve that. So if you're doing that, that means you probably can finish your master degree within one year or so one year and a half, then it will shorten your durations of study at CSUN. But just to mention, you still need to submit another application for the graduate school, for our master degree program. Yeah, thank you. So uh, can you please go over your GPA requirements for the mission and the scholarships? Oh yeah, so, um, so go back to our admission requirements. We look at students based on the GPA and the English proficiency exam. For GPA requirements, you need to have 3.0 minimum high school GPA. And for the English proficiency, uh, you need to have like a minimum uh, 61 in TOEFL or like 6.0 in else. Um, no SAT or ACT uh, required, no recommendation letter or essays. And then for the scholarship, yeah, so we do offer scholarship to international students, but only current uh, CSUN students. That means uh, once at the times you apply and get admitted, we won't um, offer any scholarship to you. But once you study at CSUN for at least one semester, uh, you are open to apply multiple scholarships. Okay. 
so uh, it's uh, like already 6.05, so we probably take the last, um, the last questions. And then after that, if you have any other questions, feel free to email me and in. So we are happy to answer your emails, um, answer your questions by emails, or if you are interested, we also have like webinars. So you can also join the webinar, our like a webinar, or have like a scheduled Zoom meeting with us individually. We are happy to do that. So our last question is, what are differences between the different CSU campuses? Okay, so that's a really good question. So uh, as in mentioned, we have like 23 campuses um, among uh, across the California. So each of these have a different uh, like concentrations and famous majors. So take CSUN as an example. We are very well known for our uh, film productions, engineering and business, and then um, take the Fullerton. And they are also uh, famous in the business and then they are the arts. Uh, and then for, let's say for the, um, uh, the San Jose, they are very um, focused on the uh, like computer science, engineering, because they are in the Silicon Valley. So each CSU campus have their own fame top majors and have their focuses. Um, and then the definitely the location is um, different. Um, each like campus is in a different area. So the living cost are probably is different. Uh, the the north northern like California state uh, campuses, they are more expensive than a thousand uh, CSU campuses. Okay, uh, so this is the last questions uh, we take because it's already over time. So again, and thank you so much for attending the workshop. It's our honor to like talk to you, to share our the system to you. And thank you so much for Kuno. So who organized it is a really good um, like events. Is so we really enjoyed it and it's a really good opportunity. So Ying, have any right. Absolutely, please go ahead, Ying. Oh, um, I just want to uh, say thank you for being with us. Um, I've, it's always a great pleasure uh, working with Indian students because I know you guys are so intelligent and um, working so hard. And also Engl um, your English proficiency is so great. So I believe studying in the US will definitely be a highlight on your resume and in your personal uh, life experience. So thank you so much um, for being with us. To uh, the university officers, Ms. Shali and Ms. Yingying, thank you so much to you uh, for making this happen, I must say. Uh, firstly, I know it's very early in the morning, so couldn't thank you enough uh, for your kind time and support. And of course, uh, for sharing not only information about your institution, which has just been uh, really nice to learn about, but also about the session topic, as I know this is a very commonly asked questions. Um, students, thank you so much. Parents, guidance counselors, thank you for joining us. Uh, we know it's late in the evening here in India. We truly appreciate your time also. I think uh, you asked a really high number of questions today. We met, I think, over time and the questions uh, the, were not only a lot many, but I think the quality was also really good. So thank you for participating actively. I also want to have a gentle reminder uh, of uh, the email addresses Ms. Shali and Yingying have uh, mentioned. If uh, you can share your email addresses privately with them, if you don't want to share it in the Q&A and want to keep it confidential, just kindly drop it in the chat box so that uh, the two uh, admission officers can be in direct touch with you for direct engagement and direct relationship purposes. And uh, I hope uh, everyone can see the uh, results of the poll that we had just launched. So thank you so much to all the students for participating in this poll and for sharing a positive feedback. And to Ms. Charlie and Ms. Yingying, thank you so much once again. We truly appreciate your kind time. Uh, I wish you a wonderful day. Look forward to keeping in touch with you. And uh, to the attendees, the session, as you know, is recorded. It will be shared with your high school counselors so other students can see it. So please feel free uh, to uh, take a recording copy from your high school guidance counselor. With having said that, that's an end and wrap for the day. I truly appreciate your kind time. And uh, thank you once again, Ms. Charlie and Ms. Yingying for making this happen. We wish you a wonderful day. Yeah, you too. Thank you for having us. Have a good evening. Thank you so Bye. much. Take care. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.